the October winds howl and storm clouds brew. Soon we will be seeing scary monsters and eerie specters lurking in our cities, promising impossible tricks and tales spun fresh from the imagination. Yes, we're talking about politicians on the campaign trail. But we've also got Halloween coming up tomorrow. A little bit of a reset there. We've got brisk winds coming up for tomorrow for the Great Lakes and the Northwest. Maybe a few storms in Kentucky and Tennessee, but overall a good picture for the festivities tomorrow. We'll cover that in more detail in just a minute. There's a look at the surface map for this afternoon. We've got a strong polar front coming out of the High Plains, moving through West Texas there into Western Kansas. That did produce quite a windstorm through the Four Corners area into New Mexico yesterday. The satellite images were showing large plumes of blowing dust coming out of the El Paso area. A little bit quieter for this afternoon. Temperatures ahead of that front in the 80s and maybe a few 90s around Austin. And the dry line starting to show up there around Big Spring, Sweetwater, and down into the Sanderson area, dew points behind that in the 30s. And west of that front, some much colder air, temperatures down in the 40s and 50s. Snow showers through the central Rockies and another system waiting in the wings out there in the west coast area. Snow showers already coming down across the northern Cascades and a large band of rain showers on the west coast. In the eastern U.S., looks rather quiet under the influence of this moderating high-pressure area coming from Canada. You can see that the dew points are rather dry, looking at 50s, indicating a northerly air mass source region, but starting to advex some of that tropical moisture north from the Gulf, and dew points already in the 70s in East Texas and on the Texas Gulf Coast, 75 at Corpus Christi. 74 at Houston. And again, those are dew point temperatures, not air temperatures. So that is rather rich moisture coming northward. And some of that is feeding this line of convection running from about Elk City up to about Concordia, Kansas. There's the setup on the surface chart. Remember the dry line is roughly in this area right here. The front running from that convection in Oklahoma to this triple point around Guthrie, Texas, and then right down towards Midland. West of that front, you can see the cooler weather down into the 60s around Clovis. However, in this little triangle right there, Fort Stockton, 88 over 34, with 91 over 37 at Sanderson. And as you go to the east, we pick up that moisture, 60s dew points in North Texas, and those 60s reach all the way to Kansas City, where they have thunderstorms approaching at this hour. Other convection in Iowa, and this gets north of that frontal boundary, the warm front running roughly like that. I'll have to go back and check the surface map. I think that actually goes a little bit further north, but this is all post-frontal air. And as you go further to the west, much colder conditions, 40s around North Platte, and then we get into almost the 30s around Akron. So what is driving the wind patterns? Let's go up to 250 millibars. This is up at about 34,000 feet. It is kind of a complex structure. We do see probably the main belt of the polar front jet running from Flagstaff to Albuquerque up towards Sioux Falls and into northwestern Ontario. This segment right here, this is probably picking up part of the subtropical jet from northern Mexico into central Texas. Another branch digging down the backside of this trough over the northwestern U.S. And when you have that kind of velocity on the west side, that's a good indicator that you're going to further deepen that long wave complex. And we can see other waves upstream extending into the Aleutians right through here. So it promises to be a stormy week ahead for much of North America. All right, let's take a look at the 500 millibar heights and vorticity. Looks like a complicated chart here, but don't let that worry you. 
This chart is not going to hurt you. In fact, I'll just kind of walk you through it. This is up at about 18,000 feet, about three miles, five kilometers. The black lines, those indicate pressure or height. So here we have high pressure or high height aloft. Of course, when we have high pressure, that's always good news if you like fair weather. Here we have low pressure or low heights. And you might be thinking that that is associated with precipitation and stormy weather. And in many cases it is, but we need to start thinking in terms of thermal structure. When we have low heights or low pressure aloft, that is an indication of cold air in the lower troposphere. So yeah, over the northwestern U.S., the north central U.S., this is probably a large blob of cold air. And this high pressure aloft over the east coast, yes, that is associated with warm weather. We were looking for a high of 75 in New York City and 80 degrees around Washington, D.C., now we know a little bit better about how to read this chart. Now let's look at that red and blue area. This is positive vorticity, where the wind has cyclonic spin. In other words, it's spinning counterclockwise. And the blue is anticyclonic rotation, anticyclonic vorticity, which has a clockwise spin. So obviously under that high pressure area, that's going to be spinning in this general direction. So it has a lot of blue right there in the center. Now we're not going to get too much into what vorticity is, but where it's changing very rapidly from blue to red, that is an area of positive vorticity advection. And those are areas where we look for upward vertical motion, such as along the cascades right in here. That is a area of upward motion because this region of red is advecting northeastward and being carried by this gradient from south to north. So all of that is advancing inland and putting this area under progressively higher positive vorticity. All of that means upward motion because that positive vorticity equation indirectly solves for vertical motion. That's been a long time technique for diagnosing motion in the atmosphere. So basically where we see those changes especially downstream from these red areas, those locations are where we are going to see deteriorating weather, falling pressures, increasing clouds, and precipitation. All right, enough of the theory. Let's take a look at the weather over the next week, looking at the 500 millibar chart. Well, this next trough, that's going to have a big impact on the western U.S. That flow down the backside is going to carve it out and really dig it into the southwestern states. Meanwhile, this other trough moving through the Midwest area into the Great Lakes going into tomorrow, and that will move up into Quebec and gradually open up. Anyway, we shift our attention back to the west. Well, there it is. A very deep trough coming up for this weekend, Sunday, major troughing, and as you learned, that's going to be associated with a new blob of cold air across the western U.S. So the main vortex over the Grand Canyon area for late Sunday, and then ejecting eastward into the Great Plains for Monday. That fast flow through Texas and Oklahoma and Kansas may combine with some Gulf moisture and produce another round of thunderstorms across the southern plains. Big ridge across the eastern U.S., so it will be dry here for a while, and northwesterly flow once again in the northeastern states. Well, here comes another trough heading into that large longwave complex. So watch this. I've not looked at the forecast, so I'm kind of waiting with bated breath here just like you guys. There it is, digging into... Washington for Tuesday. Yes, there it is, digging into California. So another cutoff low for Thursday. So just kind of a endless barrage of storm systems in the western U.S. And here we have a true cutoff low, the main branch of the polar front jet, well up to the north. Okay, that's the last frame I have there. And just a quick look around the country, starting with the northeastern U.S., Anticyclonic flow dominates that region, indicating the presence of that ridge through the Great Lakes area. Warm weather, warm advection, lots of 80s 
substance working on that area, and we can certainly see that in the water vapor imagery. There it is. A little bit of cirrus spilling over the top of that ridge, but the air mass underneath dominated by dry conditions. There it is on the precipitable water, very dry conditions over Pennsylvania. But out to the west, the warm conveyor belt bringing moisture up from Texas into Iowa and Wisconsin. The water vapor imagery in the southeastern U.S. does show a little bit of that surge of moisture northward. Now, this product is not really sensitive to the low levels, and that's where most of the moisture is located. Even so, dramatic appearance of moisture in Arkansas, Illinois, and Missouri. However, in Florida, Georgia, South Carolina, rather dry. And the visible imagery showing a little bit of stratus and stratocumulus over Alabama and open cell cumulus from Georgia into the Carolinas. As we move west into Texas, we pick up that classic moist advection pattern, very much like what we see in the springtime. As you go further to the west, the air mass does get drier. We pick up the dry line right through here and, of course, the cold front. There's a close-up look at the El Paso White Sands area. This is southern New Mexico, and we do see the lower alt cumulus forming these mountain waves like that, and also the cirrus forming mountain waves as well. And that's associated with this fast flow into the entrance region of the jet, about 70 to 80 knots across New Mexico. A prolonged heat event continues in Texas. Highs today up to 91 at Austin, 88 at San Antonio, with 86 at Dallas. Much colder as you go to the west. Tonight we're looking at lows of 30 in Albuquerque, 24 at Santa Fe, 13 at Gallup. Of course, they're up in the higher terrain near the Continental Divide. In the northern plains, a massive flux of warm air and moisture has surged northward into the Corn Belt, driving highs into the 80s in Illinois and Indiana, almost unheard of for this time of year. Highs today running about 80 degrees at Chicago, 78 at Detroit, and 78 at Green Bay. As you go further to the west, cold front and much cooler in the Dakotas where they have highs in the 40s. Further west, cold weather in Colorado, 40 for a high at Denver, 39 at Fort Collins, 36 at Cheyenne. Those were forecast highs, and I think I saw on that surface chart they broke that by a couple degrees, nosing up into the lower 40s. But tonight, a hard freeze, lows in the low to mid-20s all through eastern Colorado. In the mountains, we're looking at single digits to teens in the mountain valleys. 12 at Breckenridge, and 11 at Alamosa. In the southwestern U.S., massive cold advection overrunning most of the plateau regions, even extending down into the lower deserts. Overnight lows tonight will range from 54 at Phoenix down to 19 at Flagstaff. And as we mentioned, across the border in New Mexico, down to 13 at Gallup. And you can see just how things are much cooler in the San Joaquin Valley. Looking at upper 60s, this is very much like the kind of weather we saw back in February and March. And yet another front heading into northwestern California. If we go a little bit further north, you can see some of the structure on this. This shows some of the cold advection cumulus. This is very unstable air due to the very cold air moving over the relatively warmer waters. And of course, closer to the front, rain and gusty winds. Looking for cold weather for today. Highs were forecast to be near 50 at Seattle, 52 at Portland, and 40s and 50s in the interior deserts. Some of the higher elevations will see a freeze overnight. Other regions looking at 30s. And there's the structure on the surface chart. This is what you just looked at. There's the pocket of very cold air offshore forming this concentric bullseye of thickness patterns down to 534 decameters. And if that goes a little bit lower, 
528 is all you need to get snow in Seattle. We're not going to see that, but that shows you how cold this air mass is. Cold air in place across Alaska and Yukon. Temperatures well into the teens, and we've even got below zero in the Brooks Range. Cold air across the Northwest Territories, teens and 20s, and even this lone 9-degree reading southwest of Inuvik. Very stormy in the Hudson Bay region. Blizzard conditions, blowing snow all through southern Nunavut. And that connects back into the southern system in Quebec, which feeds all the way south into the central U.S. All right, let's take a look at the forecast. This is going to be a composite of the GFS and my own frontal analysis. So we go into tomorrow afternoon. Fronts are on the move through the Midwest region. And by tomorrow evening, triple point around, uh, I guess that's going to be North Bay, Ontario, stretching through Cincinnati into Memphis and Austin. Extensive rains all up and down this front. Cold air advances into Texas, but still looking at mid-80s from Houston to San Antonio. 75 for Dallas and 66 for Oklahoma City. Cold up north, Minnesota looking for 30s and 40s with a high of 45 at Minneapolis. Denver, however, will rise to 58. We can already see that lee side troughing starting to get established once again. Here comes our Pacific Front moving into the Great Basin area. Starting out very cold tomorrow morning across the west. Good chance of rain developing in the northwestern region and the northern Sierras. Continued cold in the Rockies with that cold air mass in place. We go into Friday. Kind of a progressive pattern. This is how things look during the evening. Another frontal system heading into Oregon and California. Big increase in rains across the Pacific Northwest, Northern California, mostly north of Sacramento. We should see significant snow totals in all of the central Idaho mountains, maybe one to two feet in the higher elevations. Two to four feet in the Cascades could have up to a foot in the Sierras and the higher elevations there. Then we go into Saturday. Stormy once again in the western U.S., Looking for showers all through Washington, Oregon, Idaho, Nevada, California, except in the lower deserts. Snow showers in the higher elevations, including the Sierras. A big cool down for California, the San Joaquin Valley, looking at 61 to 62 degrees. Amazing, considering we've seen 90s there maybe a week or two ago. In the central U.S., extensive rain throughout much of Texas, Oklahoma, into the Ozarks and Kansas chipping away very slowly at those drought conditions. Heading into Sunday, rainy again in the central U.S. Some heavy rain across Oklahoma. In the west, cold air filters southeastward, especially into the Four Corners area once again. Big cool down for the southwest deserts, looking for highs in the low to mid-70s. Meanwhile, out east, 80s working back to the northeast once again, looking for a high of 82 at Memphis. And it's going very quickly through the rest of the period. Stormy on Monday, good chance of severe weather from Oklahoma up to Iowa. There's Tuesday, election day, looks pretty rainy in the Midwest and the lower Mississippi River Valley. Snow showers in the northwestern U.S. and looking pretty good elsewhere. And then the rest of the period looking like this. Yeah, another potent winter weather system in the southwestern U.S., and that takes a similar track to all the other ones that we've seen over the past week or so. And that will do it for this Wednesday edition of Forecast Lab. Thank you very much for joining us. Hope you have a great Halloween, and we'll see you back here on Friday. Take care. Bye-bye.